as I went through undergraduate and graduate and, and doctoral studies, I learned not just more about the Eucharist, but in particular more about the Judaism of Jesus' day. Mm. And one of the things that I found was the more I learned about Judaism, the more I understood my Catholicism. Right. The more I learned about not just the ancient Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament, but ancient Jewish traditions about what the Messiah would do when he came and how he would give the people manna from heaven, how he would inaugurate a new Passover, how he would set up a new temple in which there would be this new bread of the presence. All of these traditions begin to kind of converge in my mind and help me to realize that there's a lot more in common between first century Judaism and 21st century Catholicism Definitely. than we might at first have expected. And so that's what led to this book, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. And that really touched my heart when I read that book because the first talk I ever gave um, as a seminarian uh, adult formation class was mm -hmm. on the Eucharist. Yeah. And so I was going through and doing all this research. And then I, as I began to learn about the four cups and all the other you know, good stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is like just straight out of you know, Judaism. And, I, and so it really hit me. And so I went and I, I talked to a friend of mine uh, whose mom was a Jew and she just like, opened up to a whole new level for me, even reading the text, actually talking to her and like her sharing her experience, I was like, man, and it just really opened up the faith. Uh, and so let's, let's go into like Jesus stressing in, in, in the scriptures, like, like you found that his body, that, that it really becomes his body, it really becomes his blood, the Eucharist does. Why would he do this if, if, Jews, if Jews were pretty much against uh, people drinking blood? It's a good question. It's a very tough question. It's actually the one I start the book with. Um, because if you know anything about ancient Judaism, you'll know that in the Old Testament, especially the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, uh, God prohibits the people of Israel from drinking the blood of an animal. Mm -hmm. um, this was a common practice in pa pagan religions to consume the blood of the animal because it was said that the life, or in Hebrew, the nephesh, the soul, was in the blood. And so the pagans would consume the blood of the animal in order to draw on its life. Um, but God commanded the Israelites in the book of Leviticus, do not drink the blood. You shall not drink the blood, for the life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And then, so when Jesus comes around in the New Testament, sometimes I think for us as Catholics, it's hard for us to realize just how shocking it would have been, um, both in John chapter 6 and then again at the Last Supper, for Jesus to identify the wine as his blood, and then not just to identify it as his blood, but to command the disciples, now you take this and drink it um, in memory of me. I mean, right. what could that have meant to them? Right. Um, well, as I try to show in the book, what g lays the foundations, uh, well, there are two things. First, um, in the New Covenant, the very reason God prohibited the people from drinking the blood in the Old, i.e. that the life was in the blood, mm -hmm. is the reason Jesus now requires it for them. Ah. Because in John chapter 6, he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life, life in you. You have no life in you. See, what God was trying to do with the Old Testament prohibition was prepare the people for not the natural life of some animal, but the supernatural life of the resurrected Son of God that He was going to give us in His body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist.